Good morning, and thank you for agreeing to share your story with us. Uh, my name is Musumola Ogumolaji, and um, we are from the Samuel Proctor Oral History Program at the University of Florida. Um, today is uh, March 18th, 2024, and we are at the village at the Gainesville. I'm interviewing Miss Susan Blum. Um, Susan, thank you for agreeing to do this once You're again. <laughs> and if you could, could you tell us what is your full name and could you spell it out? Yes, I am Susan Ann Blom, and it's S-U-S-A-N-A-N-N -N -N and B-L-O-M. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can get right into it. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? When were you born and uh, where were you born? Okay. I was born in Modesto, California in the year of 1941, February 7th. And um, could you speak extensively about life, you know, growing in up? California? And, yes. My mother didn't live with my father many, uh, maybe not a whole year. I uh, got her watch that had a date when, he, when they married and uh, they weren't together. When the f pictures were taken when I was a little older, so they divorced the first year. He was a Navy man, Paul LaPera was his name, Italian. I did, as a tiny little three-year-old probably, was taken and visited a pair of older people that I that I couldn't understand. They didn't speak English, so I understand they were Italian. And he was an Italian ascent, and it was his parents probably that I was meeting didn't know. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, when my mother was in the hospital, she had swallowed glasses as a child, and it was going down through her lung, and. Um, so she was bed fast because whenever she was round, it was hemorrhaging, bleeding. Mm -hmm. So she didn't move a lot. She was in bed. Uh, this was in the 40s. There was before antibiotics and that kind of thing and good doctoring and x-rays and all that good stuff that could have helped her. But mm -hmm. So she passed away at my age of nine. I remember uh, when I was going to tell you that when she was in the hospital at, at a, a few points, I went to stay with my father and his second wife. And they lived in San Francisco, and I did attend a school. I don't know how long I was with them. I remember going up and down and getting lost. The mount, It's very hilly, San Francisco. And uh, that's all I remember of it. <laughs> Just a lot of walking up and down hills <laughs> of that part of it. Um, and staying the weekends with my grandmother, they would, s grandmother never went to church, neither did grandfather, but they sent us every week. My brother and I, he was Richard uh, Choate with a different father. He, um, he was five years older and we uh, went to church together and then come home. She would take us to a movie in the afternoon to keep I guess so they could have the afternoon off, but we had a good time. We took the streetcar back to the their house in Oakland, and uh, that's happy memories that I have of uh, living there. Mm -hmm. And um, you mentioned um, you uh, was born in California. Did you also grow, grow up there, or how long did you spend? I was nine years old when my mother died, and just a little prior the year before fred and sylvia because they knew this was coming visited us with my new brother to be and he was like three years old in i think it must have been two years prior because he was like five when i was adopted sylvia come by bus to california in 1950 to get me in april of 1950 and uh, took me by bus. She told me I had a choice that if when adopted I could change my name to anything I wanted. And I thought and thought and Kathy 
Josephine, all kinds of names. I couldn't come up with one. She said, would you like Susan? Mm -hmm. Well, my name I had been calling myself was Susie Q. LaPera Brown Pierce. So when I was adopted, I was Susie Q. No, Susan. Carol Ann, uh, middle name was Carol Ann, LaPera Brown Pierce Altemeyer. Mm -hmm. I, I would give them all. <laughs> all that all long string of names. <laughs> mm. that's, that's interesting. Um, um, could you talk, I know you've talked about like the story, some of the memories you had growing up. Are there other stories or recollections from that time growing up that you would like to share too as well? Well, when I got to Iowa, I had been in the city. Mm. And now I'm on a 200 acre farm with farm animals. They had a pair of work horses that I love horses and uh, wanted to ride them. Well, this is a great big one of a team. She'd put the bit in her mouth. I'd go down the road and kind of up on the next knoll, and she decided, it's far enough, let's go back. And she would trot all the way back, a big fat horse, and I'm bouncing all over the place. So yeah, yeah, that's a, a very fun memory, but it's aggravating, because when she got to the door of the old barn, it was low, she was tall, had I not jumped off, I would have been scraped off because <laughs> her back was even with the top of the door. Oh, wow. <laughs> She's a big door horse. So how was life in Iowa? You mentioned that, yes. you know, you moved from like a much more bigger city to a, a smaller one. So uh, Oakland, was I lived behind a school there and mm. uh, had the run of a bicycle I could travel around. Uh, my mother let me go. I did errands for her before I was adopted. Um, but after she died, I, I w it was a change from being independent on my own mm -hmm. to being in a regimented um, family situation that I had somebody over me more uh, observant. Uh, I still was a free will person and I, with permission, walked across the field, this big field, and I, I t went back to tell my new father that the, the grass crop was bad. It wasn't growing up very good. It was sparse. And what it was was a field of oats. And they had put it over a, a disc field of corn that had been the year before. And it doesn't, isn't supposed to be that thick. Mm. Gro oats grows differently. So than grass. So I was learning where I was and how things were to be done. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's really interesting. As a nine-year-old. Yeah. <laughs> um, could you tell us about, you know, um, education from like your earliest years um, schooling? Mm -hmm. Well, when I got to Iowa, I was in fourth, fifth grade, and I think division and multiplication tables were very difficult for me. Fortunately, Sylvia had been a, a one rooms eight, one through eight school teacher for a few years. And so she tutored me to help catch me up to my grade level. But I was behind when I, from California to Iowa, and uh, I had the perfect tutor right in the house. So she, she was a good mom. Mm. And what was life like going to school? Uh, well, we lived about three miles from the school. Mm. In good weather, we, we were taken to school and our bikes were left there and we could ride our bicycles home. Mm. When it, of course, winter and stuff, you can't do that. But on good sure. days, if we didn't have a bicycle, we had to walk that. So most of the time we had a ride. Mm -hmm. Then there was a neighbor that alternated through the winter, so she would pick up for, I don't know if it was, I don't remember if it was a week or a day, alternate days or weeks, whatever, but she always came with her sandals. She got in her garage from her house. We had to go through the snow to get to our car and garage, too. so I always was amazed. Her car was warm, and if, if something happened, she stopped in a snowdrift somewhere, what she was going to do, because she was not dressed for winter. <laughs> open toe, I mean, open feet, <laughs> dead winter. 
Oh. <laughs> One of the many memories. <laughs> oh. Um, I know uh, you also talked about like your family briefly, um, but if you could, could you tell us more about your family background? I'm um, mm -hmm. talking about, you know, I know you mentioned um, at some point you were um, adopted and all of that. So if you could give us like a breakdown of, or tell us more about your, your family much more broadly. Okay. My mother and uh, my grandmother, that's what you're asking, I believe, was um, a Quaker, and they started in the Linville area in the middle of Iowa, and um, were quiet people. Uh, the father was a gold miner in Colorado, mm -hmm. and he came home, I guess, often, or not so often, but enough to sire, I think, six children. There were five girls and one son. The son didn't live full-term adult. I'm not sure what year he died or anything, but there were five sisters. My um, mother was the youngest. The adopted mother was the youngest. Sylvia's my great aunt. She's the youngest. There was, my grandmother was like the third. Mm. Yeah, what was her name? Uh, my mother. Your grandmother? and also grandmother was Lula Okay. Lula Small. Okay. Oh, the picture of her. Yeah. You have a picture? Yeah. Yeah. You can sh I can find it. it. Here. Okay. <sighs> that is Lula Small. Lula Small. Uh, she's my great grandmother. My grandmother was M Maddie or Martha, okay. and I have a picture of her. All the sisters. <laughs> this one is your even smaller. I don't have a big one. I. It's uh, the sisters are Famie, Flossie, Sylvia, Mildred. Mildred, uh, and I didn't give the last names. It's Famie Sarf, Flossie Hockett, Sylvia Altemeyer, and Mildred Decatur. Mm -hmm. And they were all uh, sisters? They were all sisters, okay. and uh, Sylvia was the youngest. Mm -hmm. The reason my grandmother and mother decided that, because when my grandfather was on he was a steam fitter and traveled from town to town to have work. And when he um, was out of town, he also was an alcoholic and would gone on binges. There were many months, I don't know how, how long they were, but that grandmother didn't have a place to stay, so she stayed on the farm with Sylvia and Fred. They had room, and it was a good place for a child. So uh, my mother, I understand, from Sylvia telling me she was quite a handful, <laughs> even with grandmother taking care of her. Uh, but um, that's the stories I had. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I, uh, you also mentioned that your grandmother is uh, from the Quaker family. Um, is there any connection or recollection? I know just before the interview, you were talking about you know, going to uh, Philadelphia and reconnecting with some of these histories. And could you share some of your experiences or like recollections about um, their involvement? Um, uh, the involvement with that, well, as I grew up in the Quaker church and when I married, we mar moved from, um, my husband w went into the military in Amarillo, Texas, and I joined him where we were married there in Amarillo, Texas in 62, mm -hmm. 1962, uh, married by a justice of the peace. And uh, we were on our way to our first um, assignment in Wordsmith, Michigan, and while we were in Iowa en route, he got uh, a telegram to change that order to 
South Detachment, South Carolina to Homestead Air Force Base. They wanted him for the Cuban crisis mm -hmm. rather than put him on the Canada border practically to the farthest south that we could move. We got in the truck and took off because I was eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. I was wanting warmer weather and it was February. So mm -hmm. uh, we were happy to get that change. That's interesting. I think we're still going to come back to that. Well, that other question, yeah, yeah. goes because he's Methodist, and I mm. joined the Methodist Church with him. And in doing that, I, I'm very into the faith. I'm, I, I'm a Christian. I knew that God had my hand when my mother passed away. Mm. She used to lay in bed and cry, and I'm, I'm thinking, Lord, take her to heaven so she'll be without pain. I didn't know that it was what kind of that, what that was going to do to my life. How do you know a child under under nine mm -hmm. is asking for her mother not to live because she's in pain? Take her to heaven. But I guess the child's faith trusted. He was I he taken care of me. I had a new home. I adapted well. I don't think that they thought it was well when the social worker interviewed to see how things were going like a month after I was there. They, they had, I found this out in my adoption records. She recommended not unless they got counseling because there was rivalry between the, my brother and I. He had been there three years and he was acting up. And I didn't know how to cope with it because I just sit on him. He was ornery. <laughs> and I was bigger, so I could do it. I didn't hurt him. I just would hold him down. I can't breathe. He was asthmatic. He had flat feet. He, had, he stuttered. He had a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So no wonder they coddled him. But there was problems, but not major, thank mm -hmm. God. <laughs> <laughs> on to the faith. Uh, after marriage, I, we got in a year after the child, after our ch first son was born, Jeffrey Allen Blom, we joined the Methodist Church near us, and I became active with the women's group. And soon after, I decided I want to go to the National Assembly, and my husband allowed me. Mm -hmm. And I went with the... Um, Dade County, was it, it was United Methodist Women's Group. I was on the dist Miami District. At that time, I was a part of the Miami District. I was a um, member in uh, uh, Supportive Community was mm -hmm. my title in that part. It was a, a, a lesser title. But I went with uh, the team that worked through the Miami District, and we went to the first one I ever attended was the National Assembly. <gasps> what year? I'm not sure. It's a long time ago. Yeah. I have a question, yeah, about... Back with the yeah, family. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Back with it. Yeah, I was going to get to the question of how did you meet your husband, but before oh. then, I think we, sh we should backtrack a little bit about, yeah, I know you mentioned, you know, education in when you moved to Iowa and all of that. So how did you, you know, navigate going to high school and, you know, sort of education you got before meeting your husband? Okay. Yes. I graduated from uh, Newton High School in 1960. Okay. And um, I got a job at, as a a dishwasher in a restaurant for, I guess I worked there six months. And I was driving an old Dodge truck with rattled, rusted off fenders. And I decided I didn't like to drive that old truck. And it was, the steering was needed fixing. It was hard to drive. Mm -hmm. So I went to the parking lot and looked for cars. And in school, I had taken driver's training and had a 57 Chevy as my one I test drove. So mm -hmm. I found one. And it just luckily happened to be a red and white hardtop Chevy 57, nine, that, that very classic one. Mm -hmm. And I went home and my mother said, I'm not gonna help you get this. Oh. And I went, 
with my head in my hands to work the next day. And uh, the man that was on the restaurant, he said, what's wrong, Susan? I said, well, my mother won't sign for my new co for a car so I can have a different car. He says, oh, I'll go down and check it out. And I, if I think it's going to be something good for you, I'll sign for it. Oh. He did. I got my car. <laughs> And I drove it and I loved it. Mm -hmm. So about a year later, uh, I met my husband. He was snowy day. He was helping another person out of a snow drift. And I had known him. He, he drove a, a large uh, white truck with flames on the hood. He's very <laughs> attractive. You could tell that by the kind of truck he drove. And um, I'm kind of forgetting some of the detail, but anyway, he was coming out to see me. I think we had ha had a double date just prior to that. My girlfriend that was in my church with me and I, he came to the door to pick us up for that date, mm -hmm. and he come to the door and got me, and then they drove out to her house to get her. And I'm thinking, I'm sitting in the front seat with two guys. Which one is going to be my date? <laughs> So when he gets out and goes to the door and gets Donna, they get in the back seat. Okay, now I know. <laughs> I know who, who's, that was mine. So down just a few months later, this was, this was him coming, wanting to meet me mm -hmm. after that first date. So that's kind of how our first meeting was. He had graduated in 1958, uh, two years prior. I was still evidently behind in my schooling still, but um, we both graduated and my graduation went further. I decided then after um, well, this, I met my husband after I went through beauty school. I, I have more education. <laughs> I went to Des Moines, Iowa and went to beauty school at La France Beauty Salon mm -hmm. School in, in uh, Des Moines, Iowa. Stayed at Esther Hall, which had prior been a monastery. Next, it was beside the First United Methodist Church in Des Moines and across the street from KRNT Theater. Mm -hmm. And uh, I walked to work and back and forth for the year. And uh, my friend, my classmate cat was my uh, roommate who didn't talk from the time she got up I'd go down and have breakfast and by the time I got back up she was dre dressing and out the door when I started getting my my uniform on to go to school so mm -hmm. we did this for almost a year and oh, then well. we graduated yeah why did you decide on the beauty school what Oh, you <laughs> would have to ask. <laughs> I had dated a guy that was going that wanted to be a barber, and I thought, well, maybe he'll come back. I had dated him one time, and he was wanting a little more than I wanted to put out. But so he went to somebody else, and I thought, well, if he finds out, I want to go to beauty school. Well, he didn't. But I, I thought I need, I needed something to make more money. The job I had after washing dishes went to a better job. I went to be a meat wrapper at Safeway. And I did that for like six months. And um, I decided I need a better occupation. I was only making um, I think $37 a week. And um, the lady that had been in the, my coworker was only making 10 cents more than me. And she'd been there over six years. So I wasn't going to get the raise she was. So. I needed something that was going to do better, I thought. So my, I talked over with my mother and went, to, decided to go to beauty school. So we started borrowing. I wanted to borrow it all at once. And she said, no, let's just borrow it as you need it. Mm -hmm. So we borrowed $100 a month, I guess, for, for my board and room. And uh, wise, she was so wise. I, I washed dishes the one hour uh, for the evening meal, which took off at the end of the month. 75 cents a day, but it gave me a little extra. And uh, soon my mother said, don't come home every week and it costs you money. My neighbor or my classmate Kay went home every week. 
came back, her mother had packed her, washed her clothes for her, <laughs> and gave her new clothes occasionally. And so she came back with everything already prepared for her. Well, I had spent the weekend doing my own things and going with my friends there to maybe visit their parents or whatever. I had a good, good time when I didn't go. We visited different churches on Sunday. Mm -hmm. We uh, continued going, but it was a, a good education all the way around, learning uh, to get be on my own, independent. And uh, mm -hmm. in what year was this? What year? You, yeah, sixty-two. Nineteen sixty-two. Okay. Well, that's the year I got married. No, oh. sixty-one. Sixty-one. I graduated from high school, so within that year, I made the decision to start to go further. So you graduated high school in 1961. 60. 60. And, and went to beauty school in 61, 61 because I married after I graduated and met my husband in a year. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, so we can get to it. Um, you said you ma got married in 1962. Uh, what was life like in 1962, getting married? And if you could, could you state your husband's name too as well? Yes. Yeah. Um, Yes, my mother took me, my, I got pregnant out of wedlock and um, he decided that the best thing to do would go into the military and then I would join him later. Mm -hmm. And my husband's name was Charles Allen Blom. The ironic thing was he was only known as Allen Blom through school mm -hmm. and after he was married, of course, he goes by Charles then from then on. So uh, we went, he went to Amarillo, Texas. My mother took me down uh, in my 57 Chevy. And um, we met and got a, a, rented a small trailer. My mother took a bus back home and uh, we married in a couple of weeks because I had to get a blood test in the state and everything to get to get it uh, arranged. I would have loved to gotten married in the chapel on base, but my husband did not want to do that. He re he was like probably embarrassed. He didn't want to do it. So we got married by the justice of the peace. My mother had made my dress for me. I picked it out and. She had to alter it because I had started growing a little bigger in the waist <laughs> at that time. So, yes, and then, then I already have told you, I, en route, we had his plans change the homestead. Wow. We took my, we sold my car and took his truck because he could put, what, all of our belongings underneath the, the uh, topper that he had over the back of the truck had an ironing board, a, a um, a trunk, what do you call a uh, hope chest. Okay. And um, suitcases and stuff, I guess. I think I had a few more things, but I can't remember exactly now, but not very few things. I had an ironing board. And, it, uh, pans and dishes and stuff like that. I did have a setup that we had in the trailer, so. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, what were some of like the important holidays or like events that you have like recollection or your favorite holidays, you know, during that period? Or any story during that period that you um, like to share? In our first apartment, we were kind of backed up to a neighbor which we met he had been a store he was a store owner on the main street he owned a business um, better dressed men's shop mm -hmm. and his wife was a nurse and she had just had a baby in March 9th something like that and mine was due in April so we bonded really quick because I'm having a baby and she just had one mm -hmm. these boys have been raised together and are friends uh -huh. till this day. So that bond and we we adopted each other. She's not my wasn't my mother, but she was my best friend and, and mentor because she was a nurse. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a nurse. But 
I could get the education as a high I, as a, one in one year I could get the cosmetology license so that's mm -hmm. what I did do and I worked for I worked at that for 25 years wow. then when my children were out getting at the age I could leave them more I think my second son was having a trouble with um, um, it's ESE extra, he needed extra help with learning. Dyslexia was probably the problem. Um, I was in the midst of my nurse's training. I went to a vocational training at Robert Morgan Vocational Tech in South Miami and uh, dropped him off at another lady's house, which took him to a private school for one year during that time I got my nurses training and picked them up after I did my my whatever day I was a test or or working at a hospital I'd pick the kids up and take them home so that that was getting my nurses I, I'm a licensed practical nurse and I worked for that for 25 years so I have two occupations that are now retired <laughs> wow, that's that's really fascinating, you know, moving from um, uh, being a cosmetologist to being a, a nurse. But that's quite fascinating. it isn't unheard of. There's many mm. that have done the same thing. Mm. As I have gone through and talked to people, they, 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 those two go together mm. ma many times. Mm. And why, if I may ask? What? Service, when you're servicing as a hairdresser, mm. you're pleasing the customer. But you want to do more. You want to take care of them. And uh, it's servant work. And if you're a Christian, that's, that's fulfilling that purpose. Mm -hmm. So, so um, uh, I know you mentioned your first child was born around in 1963. Um, so when did you have your second child? And did you have other children? Too? I had one other son. Okay. And uh, I told my husband before we got out of the military, he only did four years we needed to have that covered by the military expense and we better think of having another child. And he really didn't want to have another. Um, so he, he, we did. We decided to have it so that the, the child wouldn't be, um, Brad, Jeffrey wouldn't be raised alone. So we had a second one. We named him Bradley Charles Blom. The first one, Jeffrey Allen, I gave him his middle name, his first name, and Bradley got his first name. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so both of them have a part of my husband's name. And, um, and then we got out of the military, and he eventually got on with National Airlines and worked there for until they went on strike. They went on strike for quite a period of time, like a year. He took uh, and started working with a person in our church who was a contractor and builder, and he got his um, got a license to do that. What is that license? I can pull it from the bottom. Can't remember. I have to come back to that. But he got that license and worked with him for a year, and when he had got the license. His, uh, his friend and employer wouldn't increase his pay. Mm -hmm. So he went to a union job and started working up on Kendall Drive in that in that area and on apartments until the strike was ended. And mm -hmm. then when it, when it ended, he, he left the, the Carpenters Union. Carpenters. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm um, talking Trade. about your husband now what was how, what did you observe to be his experience while he was in the military what was his ex experience like um, as his wife how what, what were the, some of the things you observed while he was in the military mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know I okay. focus basically on my children and mm -hmm. going to church and training them and he was a provider. Uh, his parents had a had sold a large farm, so they were wealthy, and um, they were generous. They gave their their each, their three sons 
some money each year. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we got instead of taking the money, we got their car because they would get a new car and we, theirs was probably three years old. So every time they got a new car, I got a new car. I got their old one. So thrilled. <laughs> Yeah. Um, um, on a lighter note, do you remember any songs that um, you had to sing, maybe to your children or oh, yes. yeah, that yes. you would like to yes. share with yes. us? Yes. yes. <laughs> Every morning, it, I'll go back to when I was adopted. My mother would turn the radio on, open the. We had an upstairs. It was a large farmhouse. She'd open the uh, the stair door and turn the radio up and. Slim Hayes was on. He said, it's a beautiful day in Chicago. And here we are in middle Iowa, but the radio station was on and it was a nice greeting. So I thought, I've got to do something like that for my children. Mm -hmm. So I go in and turn on their light and I'd say, good morning to you. Good morning <laughs> to you. We're all in our places with bright, shiny faces. Oh, and I had another song. Uh, and they remember these to this day. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been some of like the fondest memories. Yeah, up. I wanted I wanted to start their day happy. Mm -hmm. And I would go off and let them do what they were going to do until I had to go back and check on them. Mm. Most of the time, they get up. And mm. uh, oh, wow. I wanted it to be happy. <laughs> yeah. That's that's great, you know. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that. <laughs> that was a fun, and they still remember it. Oh, wow. That's, that's really fascinating and interesting, how you made connection with your childhood. And when you became a mother, you wanted to replicate some of those things. But see, I didn't have it done to me. I don't mm -hmm. remember those mm -hmm. things. But God is good. He's, it was good to me. He was with me always. My faith was, I was sent to church, but I mm -hmm. also absorbed it from the sitting next in a pew next to another person and hearing the message. I didn't, my grandmother wasn't talking to me about the faith. My mother wasn't talking to me about my faith. I got it from going to church. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I got it from the shirt tail of my great grandmothers praying for the family. And that mm -hmm. I've heard that happens. God answers all those prayers. When they're asked, if you ask, you receive. Mm -hmm. And I'm finding that true. Mm -hmm. I did ask for my husband. I knew I had 10 points of uh, choosing. A, he should be someone I would want to marry if I dated. He, I put all the 10 points I wanted in a husband, and Alan filled all those 10 points. Mm -hmm. And then I, asked, I had asked the Lord to, to direct me to that person. And... I, I, when I did get it, even though it was in a way it, getting pregnant was not in my plan, I prayed that we could stay together if we married and that I wasn't going to change. I wanted to have a lifelong marriage. And when my, at the end of our 50, 58 years when he passed away, I said, thank you, Lord, for answering my prayer because that now I'm realizing he did answer it because mm -hmm. here it is at the end of life, long marriage, he did answer. And I never really mourned. We had a, a happy marriage. We had a lot of problems, but we had a happy marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, now that you're talking about faith, um, is there anything you'd like to share about like, um, like uh, your faith generally and how it has changed in terms of like the churches you used to go to and all of that? I haven't gone to many churches. I'm okay. not a church hopper. Okay. We started in the church in the community we're in and we're there at Silver Palm, our first church we joined. After we moved into our rental house in the country, we attended Silver Palm United Methodist Church 38 years. Mm -hmm. And when we moved and bought property in North Florida, we decided that be, I asked the Lord to direct me to a church similar to what we had, family church. Mm -hmm. And one of my friends in the Methodist women had moved up to Lake City and we were communicating. She was on the district Methodist women. I took her job. So 
So we communicated with Christmas letters and, and um, she took us to her church and her new church. And we weren't in the same church in South Florida. She took me to her church and it seemed comfortable and they had a choir of children and I thought, gee, if we move here, the boys can be in the choir. So mm -hmm. that's exactly what happened and it, it fit. And uh, we just snuggled right into that church because it was, I'm, I'd say God given. Mm -hmm. He answered that prayer. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you also mentioned you moved to North Florida. When did you move from Iowa to North Florida? And why did you move? Uh, well, when I moved from Iowa, we never yes. lived in Iowa. Okay. When my husband took his first, we went to Florida. Oh. We were there four years. And then he, he got a job at Miami International Airport, so we stayed. Mm -hmm. I had thought we were going to go back somewhere. He applied at three different places through the United States to different uh, aircraft companies, I guess, mm -hmm. and um, Springfield, Missouri, I think, and I don't know, one north of Georgia. He didn't want to leave South Florida. The temperature was wonderful, and he wanted to stay down there. So. That's where we stayed. <laughs> and the house that we rented was after we were out of the Air Force. So I made a little complaint. I said, you know, all of the friends I have, I'm, I'm a hairdresser and I'm working on the weekends. I had my girlfriend babysit for me the three days I worked, only three days. And um, I only had people that I work for. You don't make friends, close friends with those people. Mm -hmm. And I, until I got into the church did I start feeling acclimated and loved from people making friendships. You know, it's hard to if you're just working mm -hmm. and not having a different group to be closer to. Mm -hmm. And um, you, uh, you also mentioned like you worked as um, as um, uh, in the beauty industry, did you have a store or what oh. was li that like? I worked in a small salon. Okay. I was there, I, actually I was their high stylist. They did just do basic work. I really wasn't a high stylist, but I did, I did good work and I had good clients. I had a good time. Mm -hmm. I loved my job. <laughs> what was something that you really liked about the the job about your job about hairdressing yes being with the people <laughs> i'm a social person mm -hmm. i like to talk to people i like to be with them and um and have them enjoy what i'm doing for them True. you know it's a pride mm -hmm. i would took pride in my work it each time i try to do it better you know you keep thinking i i can do this better 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 you do get better mm -hmm. <laughs> if you work at it True. Yeah, and you also mentioned you worked, um, you received training as a nurse too as well and practice for a while. Um, <clears throat> could you tell us a little bit about that? Um, because I wanted to do that before I went to beauty school, and it took four years in 1960. I did, I, when my son was, uh, when while my children were growing up, they've gotten all this period of time, they've opened vocational schools. Mm -hmm. A vocational school's open near us, a new one. So I went and uh, put in an application and found a, that I could do it rather easily, but it would take a year. And my husband, I talked him into it, and he finally, he didn't want me to do it for many years, but he finally said, okay, when I, the period my son needed to go to a special school, was a period I went to that and it worked perfectly. I do think God answered my prayers mm -hmm. again. Um, so did you work um, at any institution as a nurse or? Um, I started in the Homestead Hospital, okay. found out that I could not be that kind of a nurse. They put me in a different position every day for three days. <laughs> I am, um, 
a person that likes to have consistency and I don't like a lot of change. I can learn my job well if I can stay where I'm at. So I found that private duty was better. So I, I hired on with an agency. The first job I got was a quadriplegic and it happened to be a night shift. I did that for three years. And then, um, then I changed from that. I couldn't get into the hospital after not having hospital experience that far away from my training. They wouldn't let me back at a hospital. So I stayed in private duty and I uh, went with agencies and uh, had some great patients. I basically took care of quadriplegics or stroke patients. Mm -hmm. And I, I love my work, And I, but all of those years I only was a fill-in and did part-time because my husband was a good provider and my children were first. I only did three days a week. Mm -hmm. um, is there any um, achievement that you like to share with us during your Nothing. career as um, any sort of ac achievement or accomplishment you'd like to share mm -hmm. during this? You know, I, know, I know you mentioned you worked for about 25 years. So is there any um, achievement you'd like to share that you remember? Of my nursing? Yeah. Um, one, I, I don't know. I think just understanding that you're fulfilling a purpose. Mm -hmm. I go in and do the best job I could do and love doing it. I work for the, a quadriplegic going through uh, his education in, in the University of Miami. Mm -hmm. He was taking medical, he wanted to be a medical Mm. <laughs> I forget his, what he was heading for anyway. Okay. He was at, uh, wanting a degree so he could get a good job. He, would, he, he could had used braces. He was good on the computer. He was his age of my son. Mm. He was in his 20s and he, what he'd fallen, he had done a, um, a boating regatta and he was, the hazing was di jumping in the the river after that and he hit a rock and broke his neck which caused him to be the quadriplegic mm -hmm. he was a very handsome handsome boy and um, he'd been trained and was able to train me on how to care for him and I did that for three years I think that probably was my favorite job when he I started driving his van. He's sitting in his wheelchair locked down next to me and, and he said, are you nervous at driving my car? I said, no more than you are <laughs> and me driving your van, hoping I won't wreck it. <laughs> he did the same thing when I left him. He had his van, after the three years, he had put the lockdown on the driver's side, had it arranged so that he could drive it and I'm sitting in the other seat. He's asking me if I was nervous about his driving. And it's like deja vu from when I started driving his truck. I said, no, you're not gonna wreck your truck. I'm not worried about it at all anymore than I was with you mm -hmm. the other way around. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's, it, it seems like you sort of got a lot of joy helping other people. I did. He, he kept me in his place. He didn't want me to be a close friend. I was his nurse. <laughs> I wanted to be friends, and he'd put, kind of put a squelt on that. Mm -hmm. But I cared for him anyway. He was, a, a, he was a gentleman, very polite, and he was appreciative. And I heard later that I was his favorite nurse. I could comb his hair perfectly the way he liked it. It wasn't, way, and he would, went to a barber. He didn't let me do the haircut. He showered. They didn't have the bathroom set up after after he, um, the nurses, after he got his education and his job, they were going to rebuild his shower so he could drive into it. The shower that we showered him in, we had to go outside, and in the winter time, it gets very chilly, even in Miami. And he had an outside shower, but he had no feeling in the body, just the head. So he wanted the hot water basically on his head. So I'd shower him in the shower chair, roll him back in with a towel around him. And uh, <laughs> funny, funny things like that. I, I enjoyed doing my job.
Mm. That's that's really great. Um, um, let's talk a little bit more about your family and you know um, raising your children. What was that like? You know, life. You know, oh. raising your children. One of my favorite things was mm -hmm. my husband worked hard, made good money. Mm -hmm. We always had a summer vacation, oh. and our f friends in our church had forty acres up in uh, uh, southern. North Carolina, below Franklin, just over the border of Georgia, and um, Scaly Mountain, where they had their property. And we fell in love with the mountains and that. And so we, we, start, we, bought, we bought 10 acres up there above, on the other side of Franklin, going toward Highland in a high mountainous area, not too high, but we bought a little plot of land. and. Dreamt that we could we camped on it. We put a camper on it in uh, camp summers. So mm -hmm. We raised our kids in the campground before we ever got to that point and that was a fun thing, too But when we found the property and got it my husband wasn't going to pull a camper anymore <laughs> He was done with that mm -hmm. Do you have any recollection of like some of the times you spent? Um, up there, yes. Some of vacations I, in the campground, trying to get the boys to go out to go to another place is like pulling teeth. The kids did not want to leave. They had such a good time in the campground. <laughs> we had a, a camp clown, or he was always making puzzles and keeping the kids entertained. He'd take a bath with a bar of soap in the stream, and the water's cold, you know. <laughs> and uh, we had. Campfires, we had all kinds of happy memories in the campground. I mean, if you've ever been in one, there's nothing like the joy of, uh, we, I cooked out and uh, wrapped things in aluminum foil and cooked them on the campfire. And I think the biscuit padded out and putting jam in it and then taking a fork around the edge, making the fruit pies or something out of biscuits yeah. was one of the fun things the kids loved the most yeah. and listen to the stories over the campfire from the rest of the people that were there we 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 did enjoy those days mm -hmm. and that sounded like one of the favorite recipes to make out there <laughs> the kids loved it yeah it was fun to do I see if there was anything else uh, yeah you could just take a hamburger patty and cut up a potato and onion and a carrot and put it in aluminum foil and you got a cooked dinner. Mm -hmm. Easy, quick, mm -hmm. and delicious. They all cook together. Yeah, it was, that was another easy thing I like to do. Yeah, that sounds fun. Do you still make this recipe now? No, I'm <laughs> not camping anymore. <laughs> <laughs> if I had to, I would. <laughs> oh, wow. Um, yeah, so um, is there any other like languages you spoke in your home aside? Um, oh no. Okay, so it was just <laughs> English. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Also talking about like, um, um, can you describe uh, the physical space in your home um, while you were either while you were in Miami or when you moved to um, uh, North Florida? <sighs> My home in South Florida, um, actually, we ended up, it was wonderful. We had one great room, of the dining room, living room together. And I had a big picture window out the front. I never put blinds on it, never closed the curtains ever. My, um, I liked, I loved the sun coming in, although we put awnings on it, because when we moved in the house in, I'm going to say around 67, because we rented for quite a many years, and then Alan's parents gave us a down payment. Actually, mm -hmm. we, they bought a lot, and the lot we could build on, but we weren't in the position to build a house with a family and all. We found the house, so Alan's dad bought the lot that he'd bought for us and gave us the money for the down payment on our property. Mm -hmm. He sold it and doubled his money later, mm -hmm. the, the lot that he bought from us. So win-win. His <laughs> father was a very generous, helpful man. And mm -hmm. um, 
we were happy. My husband built a garage so that he could do the work. He's an, he was in auto body, and he, I didn't mention that it, we came to Florida with a 32 Ford Coupe. And as we were um, mowing the yards, the rocks would hit it, so he sold it. Mm -hmm. Now he said, Susan, I'm going to bank this money. We're not using it for anything else. I will repurchase when we have a place to keep it. Yeah. That he did. We purchased a, we sold a three window and he bought a five window. It was a little different, but it was a 32 coupe, steel frame. Mm -hmm. The first one had a rumble seat and the kids got to ride in that several times. We even went to church in it once. Mm -hmm. So the church was just down the street. We were uh -huh. like just a, uh, two blocks from it. Um, what else did you enjoy about being in Miami? Did you have to go to the beach or? <laughs> was not some, not some too often. Okay. I took the kids fishing on Card Sound Road. I let them go fishing. Uh, oh. I got busy with the church, the church mm. activities. I no, I I I liked the water. I did take the kids to the beach uh, several times. I gave them swimming pool, and when we bought mm -hmm. our house, I house had a swimming pool oh. so we had our own pool at the house at home huh? so yes that must have been really fun for the kids <laughs> yeah um and the neighborhood kids because I, I hired a young woman that had just taken her red cross uh, uh, training lessons mm -hmm. and she came in the morning at nine o'clock and we i i think i had six children signed up to go my two were the only two that maintained it because they had the pool and they loved the water more. The other kids didn't want to do it in cold weather. I mean, mm -hmm. to get in the water any time of year, even when this, in the winter time, it gets really, the water stays cold. Mm -hmm. Unlike here, our pool is warm. It's it heated. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you have any family, um, like your favorite um, TV show to watch or like radio station that you listen to? I listen to um, Miami Christian Station all of the time. When I moved up here, I got into BBN Radio out of Gainesville. So mm -hmm. I've been listening to that Christian Radio all my life. Mm -hmm. I'm a TV watcher, but I don't start watching it until evening. Mm -hmm. And what kind of shows do you watch on TV? Uh, <laughs> I like Hallmark. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, I like <laughs> happy move family movies. Yeah. And when my kids were growing up, you know, let, let them watch, uh, they watch things. I watched, when I was growing up, one of the space movies. Now things are happening that is in space and they're, we're seeing it in reality. It's amazing. Mm. Oh, that's fascinating. Is there any favorite movie that you, that you, um, do you have any reco recollection of like any of your, like your favorite movie to watch? I, I you know, The String of Pearls, was one my adopted father took me to, mm -hmm. and it's a Glenn Miller story. It was good. Yeah. I love that. And mm -hmm. uh, through the years, I just love all, I love animal movies, uh -huh. pets. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. What would be your favorite thing, you know, uh, what was your favorite thing to do while you were in Miami? What was your favorite thing? What did you look up to? Maybe during the weekend or like just every day um, thing to You're not to. gonna like this. <laughs> <laughs> I love going to church. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I should have guessed that. <laughs> um, okay. Um, I mean, you know, I took my kids there and I was there with them and, and I was a Sunday school teacher. Uh -huh. uh, first and second grade or third and fourth grade in South Florida and yeah. I did first and second grade for I think five or six years in in uh, Lake City uh, Wesley Memorial Church that we joined mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah I must say I admire like your service to people from like working in the salon to being in the nurse to teaching all of that just shows like your commitment to it's in the to community mm -hmm. and uh, of course my patients weren't necessarily in the community but mm -hmm. uh, yes I uh, it took me away from home which made me appreciate the home more mm -hmm. you know yeah 
that's that's really interesting um how has your career or how did your career influence your life and um, experiences generally i guess it was a fulfillment of yeah. something to do and taking pride in what you do do and doing it for others mm. I wasn't doing it for myself. I mean, I, I, re, I re got a paycheck for it. <laughs> but what you do, you're caring for others, particularly as a nurse. Mm. Made deep friends when you, when you care for another person. The one patient I had in Miami uh, had an amputated arm. And I went to her home the day her folks came to see her. And they don't usually visit because she had turned Christian and they were Jewish. And there was a, a, a rift between them because of her faith. And uh, she had lost her arm and she was mourning and trying to live each day. And she was living in a three-story, a downstairs and an upstairs, two-story apartment, narrow building. She had, um, wanted to get out and scream. She told me one day when I first started, I want to get on an island and take a couple years worth of books with me and not leave. I want to get on an island by myself so I can scream it out. Mm -hmm. And I went home and thought and thought and thought and I said, you know, Alan, our, our, we had the camper on our property, but they rent the little cabin below us, $100 a week and we knew the people and they, they gave us a good break on it. We went up there for two weeks and I said, my husband didn't want to do it. I said, we can be away from her uh, all morning and uh, she can be in her own private place. So it, it's gonna work. So we had to drive the car so we had enough room for her to sit in the back seat and her things. So we did it. And it was a marvelous, fun thing. She made it. She was a drama teacher, and a, she was a loving, kind person, and had three children of her own. But she was having a deal with her arm. So she she's writing a book, and uh, wanting to. She did. She did. Lived in that. She loved her her little arrangement we set for her. Mm -hmm. And actually, we had to ford a stream to get over to her cabin, and she was right by it. So mm -hmm. we were just up the road, I think, from here to the parking lot, maybe, from her, mm -hmm. through the trees. That's fascinating. So she, we both took pictures. Or with a, I've got pictures, and I love her. <laughs> I did three years with her, and uh, I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. And she did, too. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Um, she went back to teaching after that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really great. Um, so uh, you moved from South Florida to North Florida. When was that and what? Yeah. Well, we decided to do that <clears throat> in 98. Mm -hmm. And we chose a lot. And my husband said um, we found it in the newspaper answered an ad and uh, in a development so we come up and looked at it and uh, we looked at quite a few places as we went to North Carolina coming through Franklin it's like halfway I mean coming through Lake City was halfway through and it would be a whole lot closer to get to the mountains if we were up here so that was a, a good challenge and uh, and Alan thought he was going to be squeezed out by the county with working in a shed on our own property. He was doing a paint and body work out of, his, out of our shed, making mm -hmm. a living after he left the airlines. After National Airlines was bought out by Pan Am, they went belly up in, within a year after they took over, so his job ended there. And that's when he started doing full-time body work. Mm -hmm. So he was his own entrepreneur, uh, which he moved to North Florida and <clears throat> left a lot of old clients down there, but we started our own business here. And actually he hired out and was working in, in uh, Live Oak at the time. Mm -hmm. 
and um, what was life like, you know, moving to, mm -hmm. you know, Lake City from um, Florida? What was like some of the changes you had to make? The main change was raising our grandchildren. Mm -hmm. My okay. my uh, second son had two children, and um, he uh, this is this is a a difficult time for him. His wife left him because he was um, using narcotics and not working full time and not being a good provider. So, um, and he wasn't taking good care. So we took over the responsibility of the children and got guardianship for him. So we decided then it would be better for us to move away from the situation and start new. He wanted, uh, my husband wanted to move to Australia. And mm -hmm. I said, no, I said, you just want to, you want to build your own thing in the middle of nowhere. And I said, well, you can do that up here. We get a, a lot, we can clear it and you build it the way you want it. Mm -hmm. So that's what we did. And we put the steel shed, we cleared a place for the shed, put when the, the shed got built, we stored our furniture and stuff in it, lived in a trailer on the property while our steel frame house was being built. Mm -hmm. So we had property there to sell. We sold it to my son and he fixed it up and moved in it. So um, worked, everything worked out well. Mm -hmm. And how long did you spend in Lake City? How long were oh, you in Lake City? 25 years. Oh, wow. So you spent a lot of time. We moved in 2000. That okay. might have been the no question you asked, and I don't know if I did answer that. We mm -hmm. moved in 2000. In 2000. We okay. were looking and bought a lot. Wasn't sure exactly when to move, but the 2000 was a year we decided to move, so it'd be easy for me to remember hmm. forever. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, before, uh, prior to 2000, or you know, while growing up, is there any historical um, events that you rem remember, you know, experiencing, or perhaps hearing about in the news, and how did that sort of impact your experience? <clears throat> well, you might say that the the Miami um, the hurricane. Andrew that came through, we lived through that. That it, it, going through any storm experience, whether it's a tornado or hurricane, mm -hmm. we didn't lose our house or building. We had a lot of damage and a horrendous cleanup. Mm -hmm. You take all of the trees and stuff and pile them on the front of your property that have gone down and all of the damaged stuff, carpets and all stuff you're throwing away. I didn't lose furniture. Mm -hmm. My husband put them up on blocks and we swept the water out of the house, got it aired out. And uh, with my two sons helping him, mm -hmm. they were at a uh, adult age, so they were able to be a big help. Jeff was married with Deborah and they were living in Kendall. He came down with a generator mm -hmm. and my husband in the auto body, he had big plastic wrapped uh, to to cover houses with he mm. covered many of the neighbors houses that had leaks in their house and they had to put stuff on top to keep the plastic from blowing off mm. but we helped helping one another and living through that mm -hmm. was the biggest event i think in our life it really was mm. but we if we had it to do again we wouldn't have rebuilt <laughs> we did Oh, but we we did, and uh, mm. do you remember when um, was was it like a series of hurricane or there's this particular one that you have in mind? That is, that was a big hit in our area. Uh -huh. We were on the fringe of the eye, so we had heavy damage mm. in the neighborhood. More so, you know, damaged the church, damaged everything. We were out of work. Went to the church and and. Um, the minister asked me if I would be in charge of the um, fellowship hall, UMCOR, which we support as a Methodist person, United Methodist Committee on Relief, brought in uh, supplies and stored them in our fellowship hall. And he wanted me to be in charge of who brought what and, and whatever. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. Well, at that point, I had just the first day out on the road wanting to see what was going on. I was checking on the lady behind who was 100 years old mm -hmm. and from my home church in Iowa, I mean, where across the street from where I went to beauty school, Mrs. Lambert lived in Des Moines. Her family come and got her and took her back to there, but she was in the parsonage and I was there to see her and to see, go on further to see my job, to see if I, I need to get to him. Mm -hmm. And I said, no, I can't be what you're needing. I'm sorry, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. So I went, my um, patient, the quadriplegic I just described, yeah. um, going through the training, or University of Florida, he uh, had stayed with a friend near, um, further south in his home. He was up by the University of Miami near the um, Jewish synagogue. He was just a half a block from it, mm -hmm. um, right off of the main US-1 highway through Miami. And his apartment wasn't damaged, just tree damage around it. But further south, the house wasn't built as well, and the frame part of it, the roof went off, and they they were hunkered in a hallway. Here he is in a wheelchair. Frightening. He, he went through worse than we did, actually. Mm. When I came out of our house from staying in our um, bathroom um, during the hardest wind, it's set like 6.37 in the morning, light is just starting to come. We were walking across the bedroom coming out of there and my closet door was open and we could see light up through this skylight. It had blown off our ridge vent on the top of our house. Wow. And, you know, didn't take off many shingles, but it, it tore off the ridge vent and a lot of water damage coming mm -hmm. in. But <laughs> that's an eye opener. He really did a lot of stuff and our floor was wet with all the water blew in from the front window it something blew into the window and broke my big picture window mm -hmm. and we run for the bathrooms <laughs> wow it was an experience yeah 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 it must have been a really you know ad experience you know trying to put and, everything back yeah and, and and when i see the towns flattened and the war zones i'm thinking boy we were there it's like a war zone we open the front door not a leaf on a tree or the grass because the wind was so strong and the salt water spray and everything. We even had land crabs in our yard and we were probably six, eight miles from the, from the ocean, mm -hmm. straight in, a black point. It goes mm -hmm. straight out to... Mm -hmm. And what was the name of this hurricane? Um, Andrew. Andrew, okay, Hurricane yes. Andrew. <laughs> I can't remember the year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, I've got it. I've got it written in a bunch of my stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And I had another grand experience. Um, Seventy in oh, since I've moved up to North Florida, our church sponsored a Haiti um, mission, and they asked the tell asking people to go with them. And it had been a lifelong dream since I was a young child to want to be a missionary because I went to my mother's missionary group and listened to her um, and saw videos and stuff of the missionaries that did different work in Africa and so forth. Mm -hmm. And when I had an opportunity to do that, Alan said I could go. And so I was working at the thrift shop and they donated $1,000 for the work. I w that was another thing I did. I volunteered at the thrift shop okay. <laughs> for six years, and um, they, they, my hours that I was working, they prorated and let me have $1,000 toward the mission I wanted to give to mm -hmm. for my year's work, and um, it was Haiti, and they put roofs on churches with, those, with that money, mm -hmm. so it helped with furnishing the money to, to put that roof on the church when I went. Mm. And we went to Kai's 
Haiti is where we went. We went in Port-au-Prince mm -hmm. and uh, was taken by um, van to, to the working with, let's see if I can remember, the church was a Mennonite group. Mm -hmm. uh, we were working with, it wasn't Methodist, but it was, it was a missionary that had come in there just to be six months and he'd been there six years. He was a contractor and he contracted to put roofs on churches mm -hmm. and uh, through his church. And so we work with him. We were one of the work teams that come to do that. Mm -hmm. And what was your experience like? That whole Haiti? week. <laughs> uh, the, the simplicity of the meals that they provided, it always was sufficient mm -hmm. and, and simple. Um, the ladies come in and cooked our meals and uh, uh, we went to the work sites, and um, the one day we went to the this missionary's wife's home, and um, she was having us do hand mending, sewing because they didn't have she didn't have a sewing machine of the linens. Where when they go on other trips, they go and have to sleep on cots, and it was fixing sheets and things that go on those cots. And that's what, kind of what I was doing that day and uh, just getting to know them better in her home. She had a picture of a boy, a big picture on the wall and it was a son that was killed in front of the church we were putting the roof on. Wow. It had happened a few years before mm -hmm. and um, uh, the church was one of the largest churches in Case, but they were they had grown, so they wanted to expand the walls and put a roof over and expand the choir loft. So, at the dinner table, they they were saying, "I don't know how we're going to get these rafters up. The walls are higher than we can reach." Hmm. So that was a question. Well, the next morning, he said, I don't know why we were questioning God's power. They thought of putting a jig on the lift on the tractor, which gave it that extra height. And with the help of um, the, the, the community men getting around on ropes to hold those things in places, they put them up. They got the roof on. Yeah. And we, the ladies provide, we were... The, the ladies that went, we were, that particular day, we were sanding on benches to add to the area for extra seating in the church. So we were sanding and putting varnish on the, those seats, mm -hmm. two by fours that were pre-measured and ready to make benches out of. Mm -hmm. um, and um, how long were you in E.T.? I mean, what year did you travel to? There. I think 71, oh, I'm guessing. Okay. I have, I have a notebook and pictures. Mm. Loved it. Yeah. Uh, for how long were you out? A week. On the mission? Oh, a week, okay. Yeah, just a week. <laughs> um, so is there any other historical event you remember or you have recollection? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Okay, yeah. It, like, <laughs> if any comes to mind, I think later my on, summer can... vacations were yeah. the highlight. It makes your year go by quickly when you have this to look forward to. Mm -hmm. We always had a week or two, two weeks together on our vacation, and we got to do the mountain thing or go to. Yeah. Most of the time, it was Iowa and family, mm -hmm. and um, we got to reconnect with our family. And and uh, those trips are. I think of all the years my husband put aside the 32 coupe that he took with us, never worked on it. It was money he would have taken from the trips and stuff. Mm -hmm. We always had, he put family first. Mm -hmm. So I let him do whatever he wanted to do when he started on the 32 not to work on it. I let him work on it when he was ready and he did. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, yeah, so um, in 2000, you moved to the Lake City, and at what point were you thinking of um, retirement? Oh, 
we were at the age of retirement, but we were raising grandchildren. Hmm. So in the busyness of raising grandchildren, you're doing things you have no idea. I started a job, but I couldn't work. If I left the kids off at the school bus at 8.30, I couldn't be there at 8 o'clock job. Hmm. And if I had to be there at 3.30, I couldn't work an eight hour job. So I tried and I had a job that I could work, but it was for a, um, um, I don't know, he was, forget his diagnosis, he couldn't, he had no mus muscular dystrophy or something, but he was the age of my son, but he was doing exactly as kids do, they don't want to get up, and they don't want to take a shower, and they don't want to do this, and I had to wash and do the laundry, and I had to do the cooking, and, and manage him as well. So I did that for, I think, four or six months, I forget. It was more than I needed to do with my responsibility with the grandkids. Mm -hmm. So I didn't worry about working. I was had all I had to do with keeping up with them mm -hmm. at that older age, my second kids. <laughs> so um, at what point did you um, decide to like move into a community? Um, Here? Uh, Yes. Okay. Well, my son, that we're raising his sons, we're causing a lot of commotion in the life, in my life. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't, when I would say I didn't want him there after 8 o'clock at night, he would come to work at 6 or 7 o'clock and staying as long as he wanted. And that leaves lights on but maybe he would come later and after I'd, and leave the gates open. I have gate to the pipeline and in a fenced yard. I just, no security here. I couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't control it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just asked not to be there after a certain time and he couldn't work through the day. He's sleeping all day. He'd come at night. The kind of behavior is what I was living with the last five years and uh, a large house that was bigger than I needed. I love my home. It was a steel frame home that we built together. It was arranged the way we wanted it. Um, each room had pictures. I had in my dining room, North Carolina with a big map of North Carolina. In my bedroom, it was Iowa. It had Iowa pictures, I think, in my kitchen I have it and this is also the Iowa. Mm -hmm. Alan's father gave us a farm one year and we were raising beans and corn on it and we were putting the, the crop was put in, a, in a, a, a grain bin and I chose this one from one of the main artists from the Midwest. He did um, 12 pictures of uh, America the Beautiful and this is one of that series he did. And above the Fruited Plains is this one. And their farmers going, taking their produce to town in the 1800s and um, to signify our, the, the year we got our farm. That's mm. why I bought that picture. <laughs> and the other one was North Carolina. got the stream behind you. We forded a stream similar to the, it was stilled a flat area we could drive over, but that's what it looked like up at. So we've had, had many beautiful things. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and North Florida, I had Florida pictures that I had before we ever decided to move. I uh -huh. already had them. I had a cypress stump. He made for me one for, what, for Christmas mm. one year. He did it in the 70s. We moved across from a cypress head when we moved up here. Mm. Deja vu. <laughs> Once it's, again. It's that room, my living room was actually um, made from things that we loved before we ever got in the position to live there. Mm. Wow. Sounds, sounds interesting. And it seemed like you, you speak about that home like you really loved it. Well, in terms of he wanted, I told you, he wanted yeah. to go to Australia. <laughs> We built his building. 
he built his house. Actually, he contracted each thing to get done. We had the steel builders come. He was going to try to put it up himself. And we have another friend of Jeff's that was Darlene's son that was born before us. He came and helped us build Austin Anderson. And um, he was there to help build the shed after Andrew. He was part of our family. He, it's my adopted son. I, now his mother and father are gone. I guess I'm his to go to mom now because he, he lives in Crystal River now and I uh, don't get to see him often enough, but he's still a love to me. Anyway, he helped build our, st was going to build it and they found out that they were, it was too high, high of beams, too much needed to be done. Even if we rented uh, a lift, we needed more. So, and to do it right, there was a big puzzle all that steel framing. So we hired it done and uh, then they left a bucket of screws on the on the floor as they left. My husband got on the ladder and used almost all of those reinforcing everything they had done, put it putting more in. Because <laughs> he was aircraft mechanic. He knew how yeah. to do it. Mm -hmm. It's his abilities. So Yeah. Well yeah. um so I'm um, talking about um, retirement now. Um, how did you hear about um, the village at Gainesville? <clears throat> well, when I, my one son said, what will you do, Mom, if I leave? Hmm. The problem is not what I would do if he left. It's, I really don't need to be there now by myself hmm. at 81 years old by myself. Hmm in an insecure yard that the gate's not always closed when I want it to be closed. I'd walk out at dusk and shut it, but it'd get open because he came in and out when he wanted to it, through the evening and night. So security. So I started looking. My son had moved from South Florida that he had lived in. He bought my home down there mm. in South Florida, yeah. lived there 52 years because he was raised in it. <laughs> from the age of five, I think, he lived in that house until that short time he was married and then moved back in it when we moved out. Mm -hmm. So he moved up here, bought five acres. And um, so that I'd be closer to him, I knew I was going to move to Gainesville, and I started researching the different areas. And this was the first one we went to, and I thought, oh, it's over my head. We can't afford it. So we looked at all of the... Um, uh, independent living, but most of them are within one big building. You have independent living within the uh, assisted living. Okay. And this was more what I wanted, whether um, it is. And then we went to the uh, other one you interviewed last year. Um, the Oak Hammock. Oak Hammock. Yeah. And I fell in love with her sewing room. <laughs> One of the members that lives here in another floor, his mother lives there, and she was the one in that, in that room. She's uh -huh. over 100 years old and doing lap quilts for charity. Uh -huh. And um, I thought, oh, this is where I want to be. <laughs> but they're asking to move into there is like 450 or 80,000 unrefundable. It stays with them if you die in the month after you move, it's theirs. It doesn't come back to the family. This one was only 5000 to to move in, oh. to to lock in, to, yeah. to secure. Yeah. But you're making a payments, and the rest is similar. Uh, the, the grounds are fantastic here, so we came back here. Well, so I paid my thing to lock me into starting. Mm -hmm. So I put my house up for sale then. And I guess it was just, took us over a year to sell the house. I left it to my son and his wife to um, sell it because they did theirs in South Florida, our first house. Yeah. <laughs> they sold that one and made good money and bought a five acres and uh, they rebuilt it to their, had a lot of work to, to fix it um, comfortable. and and um, the way they needed it to be. And um, so 
I chose this to be closer to them, mm -hmm. and uh, it's worked out beautifully. Yeah. Not only, it's not far off of 75 to take uh, go back to Lake City to my church. It's mm -hmm. like, I think 45 minutes, I'll say, to get to Lake, my, my Wesley Memorial ch Church there, mm -hmm. my church family. Yeah. And um, before, prior to moving in, what was like your expectation? Did you have expectations about moving in uh, to the village or like any fears about moving into the retirement community generally? Well, being I'd started out in a similar type place, no, absolutely none. Mm -hmm. I believe in the power of positive thinking, mm. to be positive and uh, I am a social person. I love people <laughs> and uh, I didn't want to eat alone. We've made, I've made <laughs> friends, and it's fun. They have it set up for a family table, and even if you've got two or three people you're eating with, they can't be there every day. Mm -hmm. So you go to the family table. You, whenever you get there, they, she, they take the ones pretty much in order. If you want to go to family table, you don't have a choice who's there. You mm -hmm. just go, and you meet. You're meeting people, mm -hmm. eventually. They'll be at a different place, even if it's the same people occasionally. They might be in a different seating arrangements, mm -hmm. and you'll get to know them better each time. Mm -hmm. I love it here. <laughs> That's great. Um, in what year did you move in here? Uh, 2000, August 2023. Okay, so very August recently. August 15th, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I've been here less than a year. Yeah. I think I'm on my seventh month, I guess. I uh -huh. haven't counted again. <laughs> so my fingers recent. up. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, so um, I know you've moved here just like seven months, but outside of the community, what would you, do you interact much with like the Gainesville community as a whole? Um, I wasn't real familiar with this. I'm going okay. on the outings. Mm -hmm. I went, yes, I'm going on the outings that, that they provide here. We just went to Micanopy. Uh -huh. And I, Alan and I had visited that seven years ago when we moved up here. We went at a time it was off season mm -hmm. and there wasn't anybody on the streets. And I gave, when we saw it in the paper, I said, well, it's nothing. It's a, it's a, it's a ghost town. <laughs> I went on the bus and I had a good time. <laughs> <laughs> the museum was open and the lady that gave part of the, the talk uh, telling about uh, um, the um, Cracker Homes and, and the lifestyle that they had. Her mother lives here at the village and has gone from an apartment into assisted living into memory care now. So mm -hmm. she comes and volunteers and gives uh, manicures at there when she's visiting her mother. She visits her mother and does some manicures to those that are don't have good memories any longer but need care. And uh, I'm learning to meet the outside community that way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, at least you're exploring. Yeah, going to make an OP. That I was happen. shocked <laughs> that it was the opposite of what I said. <laughs> they asked me about it. I said, I don't think it's anything. It was a ghost town when I went through there. All I seen was they have a beautiful antebellum home that they have as a bed and breakfast now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we I went in to see, the bed and breakfast that time. And it was the only thing in the whole town. But... Everything was closed. Mm -hmm. Now we went down and all the stores are open. There we got lunch down there and went in the stores. I bought a ring and I bought some earrings out of the jewelry store. And uh, wonderful uh, museum interest the, the stories of this the history of this area is wonderful. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what, what is one fun thing that you enjoy doing here at the village? Uh, going to the activities they have, I have, mm. I, I do play bingo. I didn't didn't at first, but I do love doing the bingo. I like mm. to um, meal time together is one of the fun things. I usually stay in the apartment in the mornings, mm -hmm. but I'm trying to start exercising now because I've done enough sitting. <laughs> I need 
to get stronger, not mm. do that much sitting because I've let my muscles get low now. I'm doing the weight training and oh my goodness, I'm hurting. So I know it's working. <laughs> I got to work through it. <laughs> oh, well, that sounds really fun. Um, <laughs> it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I think, yeah, I think it's just really good to, you know, sort of keep fit and to remain active. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, um, okay, um, is there any challenges that you face as a resident here or anything that, that you think could be, like, improved? Um, I'm not looking for improvements. Okay. <laughs> I'm I'm enjoying living here. I'm not I'm, power of positive thinking. I said it earlier, okay. <laughs> and I will say that's what I try to live by: the power mm -hmm. of positive thinking. Because I'm having a good time. It's well organized. Mm -hmm. It's well maintained, and they will let. They, we have people that if you have a disagreement or something you don't like, mm -hmm. they'll work on it. Mm -hmm. So, and if I have something need in the apartment. Maintenance is here within a short time, mm -hmm. depending on when you ask for it. If, if I complain about things not getting done, it might be because I didn't call it in. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask for it. Yeah, <clears throat> sure. Yeah, um, so moving on to like your reflections and advice, what, do you, what would you say are you most um, grateful for in life? My faith. Hmm. It has kept me through my whole life, and I know that he will see me through the end. Mm -hmm. He's promised that. And um, he brought me the man of my life, my husband, which was not only generous, handsome, uh, a good provider, long marriage. Hmm. I've, been, I've had that prayer answered, and... Uh, now I forgot the question you asked. Yeah, it's, it's basically <laughs> like, what are you most grateful for? That, my, what mar are you? my marriage and my long marriage mm -hmm. and life. And now I, um, my Sunday day, I, I really enjoy when I leave my, I am um, singing in a nursing home twice a month with a group we call the Joy Singers. Mm -hmm. We use concourse ministry, little song books and a CD and we, we bring uh, the old church hymns to the residents and they can choose what they want to sing. If they don't, we just go through them. There's probably 50 songs in there. And uh, we're a little group that goes there and we're trying to get more, but not many people are wanting to do it. We do it twice a month and we mm -hmm. do to four different nursing homes in Lake City. Mm -hmm. And uh, they all love it after they get done listening to one hour of hymn sing. Uh, we just pack up and see them in another, every other month. We do two a month, and mm. we, that is a joy I do. So uh, I do that with a church. So it's a little mission project on the side of just going to church, mm. attending Sunday school. It's uh, doing the Lord's work, helping memories stay alive and, and giving them hope. Mm. That's that's great. Um, what do you look forward the most? Is there something you look forward to the most? Each day. <laughs> <laughs> that's Each such a day great is answer. new. <laughs> Each day is brand new. <laughs> and this was exciting to think about. I have wanted to write my story hmm. for years so that my children have it. But I want it more detailed, and I will do that in writing. Mm -hmm. But this, this is a, a great start. Mm -hmm. This is a great start. Yeah. Thank I'm, you. Yeah, I'm glad we're here to listen to your amazing story. <laughs> um, so um, what advice would you give to the younger generation based on your experience? I'm seeing the moral decay of um, the youth that they don't want a formal religion. Mm. And um, if they read the Bible, maybe they can sort out their own things, but they must know that we have a God 
that is going to be doing the judge and coming back one day and if they aren't ready for what's going to be coming in the future they're going to be at loss mm -hmm. that's my main thing I, I would hope that they will try to find their own way mm -hmm. to God mm -hmm. thank you for sharing this advice and um, what would you advise like younger people about you know planning for retirement or just generally planning for life at that stage of retiring mm -hmm. I thought it was hard when we were doing it mm -hmm. but the economy isn't the same as it was when it was hard for us I don't think you can plan for retirement you just have to live and work the way you can in the economy it's here do the best you can, enjoy each day, mm -hmm. and do try to lay some up for, for the future because in those I, IRAs we were able to set aside, they're, they're giving me a bonus now. So mm -hmm. I'm able to say that they were worth it, but we also had a father-in-law that was giving us some money. We were able to do that. so. It's not the same for our, this next generation, so mm -hmm. always. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But if, if there's something you would want them to keep in mind, what would this be? Even considering like uh, the situation, the economic situation at the moment, what would be this one thing you want them to keep in mind about um, retirement? Back to my faith. Mm -hmm. They can depend on God. He has their backs. He loves them before they were born, and he, he has their, all they have to do is recognize him and honor him and praise him. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, is there any other thing you'd like to share with us? Any special stories or recollection of anything we missed out? I could probably talk hours, but I can't think <laughs> of any more now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, thank you so much for doing this interview with us. We enjoyed every beat that you have shared with us from like your story growing up to like your raising family and all of that. So we really do appreciate this. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Miss Susan Blum. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs> this happens to be my adoptive parents and Sylvia is my great aunt, my grandmother's youngest sister. She was in Iowa and born and raised around Linville, Iowa, this kind of the center of the state. And Fred was a German uh, descent and he was a farmer, of course. Mm -hmm. Very private, very quiet gentleman. This is when my adopted family Fred and Sylvia when they married okay. and this Sugar. is a picture of what they look like in the 50s when I was adopted this was the year I was adopted um. and they had my new brother who was three years younger, for three years before they got me. Mm. So I left an older brother who was five years older than me coming to another state from California to Iowa in 1950 and um, to a younger brother on a farm with a large acre, 200 acres. Wow, farm huge. And uh, he didn't, he died of heart trouble and my mother lived, adopted mother lived many years um, beyond that. And she passed away in a nursing home. She didn't want to come to Florida. Okay. This was a picture of my Fred with his um, farm. He was having the land tiled. He was a proud farmer. This is, um, well, that's, this is the, their 50th wedding anniversary picture. Okay. And this is, a, when, this is their family when they were younger. Um, 
I don't know what year it doesn't have it on here. I went, I've been going, I went through pictures and pictures last night and pictures and pictures. It's hard to come up with stuff when your mind is absorbing what you're seeing. I hadn't seen these pictures, my husband had them all in a bag. I never looked at them before ever. Ah, I know, oh my goodness. That's overwhelming to come across it. Yeah, and there are pictures of, she's got first, pictures of his first birthday, second birthday, third birthday, fourth birthday, wow. and the okay. seventh birthday. So I'm going to take them out of that pile and put them in his baby book that she didn't have filled. Mm -hmm. But, and his daughter, Alan, I didn't tell this part of it because it's not my story. It kind of mm -hmm. is, but it isn't. Alan had a daughter before we married. And so that's why he didn't want to get married in a church or whatever, I guess. And his, he didn't tell his parents that I was pregnant. I had to do that. It's a little difficult, the beginning of our marriage. But um, uh, now I just, I think the other part I want to show you is our family. Yeah. About three pictures of, um, this is, Probably our wedding picture. <laughs> so beautiful. I, it wasn't. Nobody <laughs> took a picture of our wedding. I need it. Yeah, it's so lovely. You're right. He is handsome. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> very. This was a, a very nice picture yeah. of our children. And um, do you want to give the names? Uh, yes. Our first son is Jeff. Uh, this is Jeffrey Jeff and Brad. Brad. Jeffrey and Brad. Yes. And when Brad married, his wife named their first child Bradley. So we have two Brads in the family. And being I raised my second kids, I'm mixing my kids up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> This is Bradley. It's one of his school pictures. <laughs> I know, really. <laughs> Jeff, let me see if I got a better one. That maybe the high school picture would be better. This is okay. I just showed you Bradley. This is his graduation picture yeah. of Chris, uh, Brad. Brad. Yes. And Jeffrey. Okay, this is a better picture. Either one of them. I don't know which one you want to pick. <clears throat> and then I'll show you his graduation. He played the trombone, and I got I think I got a picture with that trombone. Yeah. Yeah, they're high school pictures, yeah. Uh family. Yeah, that's the same one. This is his high school picture. Yeah. And I already showed you the trombone one, but yeah. I had to have both of them. That other one was so nice. Mm -hmm. That was Brad again? Jeff. 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 Okay. Jeffrey. Jeffrey's the uh, first one. Okay, this is when they were babies. This uh. one over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This was a high school, this is one of our reunions, my high school reunion, one of the years I went back. And that's his, this is one of my grandsons, this is, this is Bradley. Oh, <laughs> I'm the same as me. And some of the puppies. Well, that's one of my favorite pictures of puppies. <laughs> I don't know. This is the grandsons together. And this is Brad and his, the boy's mother, Christine. I think we're married 11 years, something like that. Here's a, a good picture of the two of them. 
<laughs> and this is after we had to start raising them. That's at the age we started raising them. The grandkids. Mm -hmm. Okay. My fingernails. <laughs> These are later pictures I just, uh, this is my elementary country school teacher uh. taking us to a, an art museum in Des Moines when, whoops, when we were in uh, elementary school. My wow. What year is this? Do you remember? <laughs> in the 50s. Okay. Late 50s. 50s. I graduated in 60, so it yeah. had been the middle 50s maybe. Mm. Yeah, I was about eighth grade here in this, maybe. Um, um, my cousin Sandra, my, my adopted brother, and here I am holding, one, I babysat him <laughs> years <laughs> later. Oh, anyway, yeah, that's it. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>